sixth and final countdown programme, Ian Woosnam, Europe's captain, talks about his two wildcard selections. We join Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson and the rest of the American team on their reconnaissance trip to the K-Club. The spectacular Palmer course goes under the spotlight, in particular the challenging finish presented by the last three holes. And we recall how Europe has benefited from the luck of the Irish. But first we catch up with all the action from the last two weeks, starting in Akron, Ohio, for the WGC Bridgestone Invitational. With all the points that were on offer, the European team could still change shape. But Paul Casey merely cemented his position with a brilliant third round 64, eventually finishing tied fourth. Luke Donald, who was a captain's pick in 2004, had no need of Woosnam's vote this time. Third the week before in the US PGA, he maintained that form with a joint eighth finish in Akron. Spain's Jose Maria Olazabal has often had to rely on a captain's pick in the past, and he needed a really strong performance here to guarantee his place, particularly as he decided to take his chances and go home to Spain, rather than play in the final qualifying tournament in Germany. Tied 22nd kept him in the top 10 automatic places, but still vulnerable. The American team had been finalised the week before at the US PGA, but it was encouraging for them to see the top three positions going to US team members. A typically consistent Jim Furyk finished third, helped by this perfect shot at the fifth in the second round. Two years ago, Stuart Sink won the week after being selected by Hal Sutton. He's once again a captain's pick, and he very nearly did the same again, leading by one going into the final round. He ended up in a playoff with you know who. Tiger was the defending champion, had won his previous three tournaments, and whatever the weather, wasn't about to give this one away. Sink pushed him hard though, and it was only at the fourth extra hole that Tiger finally clinched it. Since missing the cut at the US Open after the death of his father, he's been virtually unstoppable. And so to Munich and the BMW International, the final qualifying tournament for the European Ryder Cup side. Lee Westwood, though unable to qualify, put himself in line for a captain's pick by finishing tied 28th despite a throat infection. Thomas Bjorn, another potential wild card, shot a 67 on day two and eventually finished in 13th place. One player free from all the worry of qualifying was the defending champion David Howe. He shot a third round 66 in Munich to lead by two going into the last day. A level par 72 on Sunday dropped him to a tie for fourth place, but he's looking forward to donning European colours at the K Club for the second time. Although pre-tournament favourite Luke Donald couldn't quite justify the bookmaker's confidence, the Englishman always delivers these days. A closing 67 gave him a share of sixth, and he's likely to be one of Captain Woosnam's trump cards. So too is Europe's talisman Colin Montgomery. He shared sixth place with Donald in Munich, and with shots like this, the confidence could be sky high when he tees it up against the United States. Here's another man coming nicely to the boil. Padraig Harrington, twice a previous winner on German soil. He dismissed any suggestion a fourth Ryder Cup outing in front of his fellow countrymen might be in jeopardy by finishing tied second in Munich after a playoff. Ryder Cup debutant Henrik Stenson of Sweden, this year's Qatar Masters champion, was the steadiest of the Europeans on the last day in Munich. A 68 on Sunday won him a playoff place against Harrington and Retief Goosen. And that approach to the 18th second time round set up the chance of a winning Eagle 3. Henrik Stenson at last gets his hands on a BMW title, having missed out in a playoff in the Asian Open in April. It's his fourth victory on tour, and with Robert Carlsen, they'll comprise a talented two-man Swedish contribution to Europe's Ryder Cup team. It was just great to be up in contention. Now, it's been a while since I was right up there, and uh, you know it's just good practice for, for what's coming. Shortly after Stenson had been presented with his trophy and his check, Ian Woosnam was on his way to a crowded media centre. With his top ten players now qualified, the skipper's next task was to announce his two wildcards. His deliberations had been long and agonising, but he eventually went with two tried and tested veterans. 
My first pick is Darren Clark. And my second pick is Lee Westwood. They are magnificent players. Darren's had his problems in the last couple of years, but he's a magnificent player. He's got a great record in the Ryder Cup. And Lee Westwood, he's uh, won many tournaments around the world. His last record in the Ryder Cup, four and a half points, stands for itself. Uh, Lee has also won twice around the K Club. And I think that has uh, persuaded me to go for Lee. So at last we know the 12 who will line up against the Americans and amazingly they're led by a rookie, Arthur Stenson's second win of the season. Donald looks to be bang in form, Garcia's become a Ryder Cup stalwart. Howell's been a shoe in after strong early season form. Montgomery will be playing in his eighth Ryder Cup since his debut in 1991. Casey's had eight top tens, including two wins this season. Robert Carlson makes it at last, one of only two rookies, but with seven wins on tour. And the two Irishmen will draw massive support in their home city. While Jose Maria Olufabel just managed to cling on to 10th spot. And finally, the two wild card picks. Clark and Westwood, both vastly experienced, but it was still a very difficult decision. Well, I don't want to single out any, any player. You know, over the week there was a number of players who could have qualified for the Ryder Cup. And as it went further on down the week, uh, we were just left uh, to a number of players. And obviously Thomas is one of them. But, uh, you know, that's my job. i got to go with my gut feeling. And uh, I went basically on the record, really. Clark and Westwood have played every Ryder Cup since their debuts in 1997. They combined well in foursomes and four balls. But would Clark be ready to play so soon after the death of his wife, Heather? I spoke to him uh, uh, earlier on the week before I uh, before I got here, and I said to him, you know, I'm going, you know, uh, I hear you wanted to play in the Ryder Cup and everything. You're ready for it and everything. And I said I'll let you know on Sunday if I picked you or not. And uh, I decided I was going to pick uh, Darren last Thursday, so I gave him a ring and told him, and uh, that I wanted him in the team. Are you happy with that? And are you prepared to, you know, to commit yourself to it and everything? And he was really happy with it. The other choice seemed to be between Westwood and Thomas Bjorn. Westwood's four and a half points last time at Oakland Hills may have swayed the captain. Lee is a, just a fantastic competitor. He's won twice around the K Club. Uh, he's got a fantastic game. He's got a great attitude and uh, he's a very strong character. With the qualification and selection of the final 12 now complete, Woosnam can begin to work on his team, which he feels is in excellent shape. It's a strong team. Uh, you know, obviously, there's diff some, we've got a couple of new guys in there with Stenson and Carson. You know, they're two great players. They've played some great golf this year. And, uh, you know, Stenson's just won today. He's come back into form, which is great. And two very long hitters, which, which is needed for at the K-Club. And uh, it's going to be interesting. But can his team live up to their expectations as favourites? and make it a European record of three straight wins. After obviously the, the victory in, uh, in Oakland Hills, it's uh, by so many points, uh, you know, they've, I'm, I'm there, they've got four rookies in. Yes, we are going to be favourites, but uh, we don't want to get carried away. We want to keep doing the same things that we've done over the last 20 years and uh, maintain what we've done. Not only will Woosnam have the personable Irishman Des Smith, a former European tour player among his backroom staff, He'll hope the three Irishmen in his team will be so spurred on by vociferous home support that they can extend a phenomenal record. On four of the seven occasions when Europe have won or retained the trophy, an Irishman has played such a prominent part, they've gone down in Ryder Cup folklore. Something about the Irish in the Ryder Cup. So we've been very lucky and we've just come up with, with the right answers. Thank God, it, it worked for me as well. I wish everybody could experience that feeling, it was really, really special. Eamon Darcy, together with captains Jacqueline and Nicholas, will forever remember a moment at Muirfield Village in 87 when this slippery putt gave Darcy a narrow win over Ben Crenshaw and took Europe within touching distance of an historic victory. Yeah, it was the first time we'd won in America in the history of the Ryder Cup. I mean, it doesn't get better than that. And to be to be part of uh, sort of winning, sort of holding that putt, and somebody said to Sebi, "Congratulations! You know, you won 
winning putt and he said no Darcy hold the winning putt you know it doesn't get better than that Two years later at the Belfry, Europe retained the trophy after a tie and Christy O'Connor Jr. earned a hero status after his memorable two-iron approach to the notorious 18th that led to a winning birdie and a crucial one-hole victory over the world's number one, Fred Coppers. One would have felt that day that neither of us should have got beat, you know, but that's not the way it is. You go out there and you're trying to get a point for your, for your side. I suppose I hit a shot that I thought I never would dream about. I mean. You know, 221 over water, two iron for me, that was, you know, fantastic. Europe came to Oak Hill Country Club in New York in 95, looking to regain the trophy, which they did when Philip Walton, an unlikely Irish hero, beat the veteran Jay Haas. Walton had two putts to take the vital point, but his first was so calm and cool and accurate, a second wasn't required, and the self-effacing Irishman was mobbed by Captain Bernhard Gallagher and his euphoric team. And nobody from the Emerald Isle will ever forget the Belfry 2002 when Paul McGinley, as popular an Irishman as has ever played the game, hold the critical putt. It gave him a half with Jim Furyk and Europe victory over a strongly fancied American team. In my mind, I had this putt to win the Ryder Cup. I felt I was very fortunate to have that opportunity. Uh, I'm also very fortunate that I went in because sometimes you can hit the best putts in the, in the world, but due to the idiosyncrasies of golf, it can miss for some reason or another. It's nice to be remembered, uh, to, have, to have such a great memory in my career. Um, you know, it's obviously the outstanding memory of my career so far, and uh, uh, it is special. Yeah, it's, it'll always be, right a couple always be extremely special. Man. So will the luck of the Irish hold as Clark, Harrington and McGinley seek to do their country proud and produce a fifth Ryder Cup hero on home soil.